Hey guys, how's it going and welcome to another tutorial on quantum mechanics. So in this tutorial I'm going to show you guys how to evaluate the commutator of the angular momentum operator LX with LY. And basically the commutator of LX with LY gives you IH cross LZ which is the ZH component of the angular momentum operator and LX and LY are the X and Y axis component of the angular momentum respectively. So in this tutorial I'm going to show you that how you can evaluate this accurately without any assuming any information except um, you will basically need to know that you will basically need to know some of the commutator algebra and you will also need to know the value of the commutator of mm, sorry position with the momentum is equal to IH cross. So um, let me just rewrite that. So you will basically need to know this information IH cross and so on for the different components of the momentum and position. So you'll need to know all this. Similarly for the ZH component. So let's begin. So basically the angular momentum is given as the vector product between the position operator and the momentum operator and the position operator can be written as xi plus yj plus zk and similarly the momentum can be written as pxi plus pyj plus pzk so to get l what you will do is you will take the vector product like this x y z p x p y p z and you will get mm, the ith component would be y p z minus c p y minus j component would be x p z minus c p x and the k component would be xpy minus ypx so basically you can write lx as ypz minus cpy ly as zpx minus xpz and lz as xpy minus ypx so we will be needing these two in order to evaluate this quantity. So these are the different components of the angular momentum operator. Now we will plug these two in the commutator equation. To get um, Lx Ly is equal to using these y p z minus z p y comma z p x minus x p z. So that's it. And we can evaluate it by using some of the basic commutator algebra. So that would give us um, y p z. Oh, let me just uh, put it. Let it stay in here for a while, and then write it as z p x minus x p z minus z p y comma z p x minus x p z and then open these two further and you would get y p z comma z p x minus y p z comma x p z minus z p y comma z p x and plus z p y XPC. Now I will ask you to 
look at this four terms very carefully and what you would notice is that two of these are going to vanish that is basically they are going to be zero so how do you know that so if you look at this term carefully then what you would notice is that there is no pair of variables that uh, that are not going to commute so basically each pair any pair of variables that you can form from this equation all of them are going to commute so even if you open it further and further and you will have different pairs of different um, operators it won't matter because all those operator and all those pairs of operators and all those commutators are going to be zero because you can see that y commutes with x y commutes with pz pz commutes with pz and pz commutes with x pz commutes with y so in any case this whole term is going to vanish and you are going to end up with a big fat zero so this is going to be zero similarly is there any other term like that so maybe you can pause the video and think about it by yourself and try to see that however I'll just tell you that another term like that would be this so this term would also vanish because there is again no pair of operators that don't commute with each other so these two terms are going to be zero while if you look at this and this the first and the last term then you will notice that there is necessarily a pair of operators that is not going to commute and that is going to give you a non-zero term and the reason is here we have a pair that is z and pz so we know that pz and z don't commute with each other and we'll get a non-zero value similarly z and pz here don't commute with each other and we'll get a non-zero value so we can move on further to get um, so now we can just open these up and get y pz comma cpx plus the next term would be basically zero so or maybe I can just go ahead and for the sake of clarity and do that also so we will get y z p x p z and then we will open this term and get z p y comma x p z plus z comma x p z p y so here you can clearly notice that this commutator even though if you will open it further this is definitely going to be zero so again this would go to zero and again if you it doesn't matter how much you further apply some algebra and open it it is again going to be zero and the only two non-zero commutators are going to be these two so evaluate them further and we'll get y p z comma z p x and again the second part that we will open up that would again be zero because pz and px don't commute with each other i mean sorry they commute with each other so that will be zero so i will not open that and again we will just open the non-zero part of this commutator and we will get z comma pz that is x here and py so basically the commutator of z with pz is ih cross and since it is the reverse of that we will get minus ih cross so we get minus ih cross by px plus ih cross x py so that is the commutator and you can just take it out common and get it as x py minus y px now in the beginning of this tutorial we evaluated the three components of the angular momentum and the LZ component is basically x py minus y px which is this so basically what we have derived here is this that the commutator of LX and LY is actually equal to IH cross LZ so we have finally derived it so is equal to IH cross LZ so that's it that's the derivation so I hope you guys um, followed this tutorial pretty easily and learned something from it and in case you did then don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this thanks for watching and have a great day